the Triathlon Show 281. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of That Triathlon Show, the podcast presented by scientifictriathlon.com. I'm your host Michael and on today's episode I interview Paolo Puccinelli. Paolo is a sports medicine physician with a PhD in exercise physiology and he has conducted a study recently called Predictors of Performance in Amateur Olympic Distance Triathlon. It is open access on ResearchGate, so I have it linked to in the show notes, so you can go and check it out. But uh, we will discuss that in depth in today's interview and see well, what are the predictors of performance in amateur athletes. But before we get into that, big thanks to our sponsors, Precision Hydration. Precision Hydration creates electrolytes that you can match to how you sweat. They have created an online sweat test that has been validated against uh, actual sweat data used, tested with medical grade equipment. So with that online sweat test, you can just fill in 10 simple questions and you will get a good estimate for how much sodium you lose in your sweat. And then you can tailor that information to your race hydration plan and precision hydration uh, does put one together for you actually based on all of your answers in that, uh, in that questionnaire. Uh, I have used precision hydration electrolytes for years and really love them. They are great because they are really easy to control your sodium intake to make sure that you you re- replenish sodium adequately, but also it tastes great. So that's a, a nice bonus. You can get 15% off your order of precision hydration electrolytes with the promo code that triathlon show 15 on precisionhydration.com. And thank you to Roka, who are the world leading manufacturers of wetsuits, tri suits, swim skins, goggles, and high performance eyeglasses and sunglasses. Whether you're looking to go faster in the open water, get more performance and aerodynamics out of your tri suit, or find the perfect pair of eyeglasses for combining function, comfort, and design, Roka have an option for you based on exceptional research and development and attention to every single detail of their products. Personally, I use a long list of Roka products, uh, all the way from the Maverick X2 wetsuit to the Rory prescription eyeglasses. And I can honestly say that all of the products that I use are really, really amazing. And they're a true joy to use, whether we're talking about sports or more casual day-to-day use like the Rory uh, eyeglasses. You can get 20% off your Roka order with the promo code that you can get on roka.com forward slash TTS. Now without any further ado, let's get into the interview with Dr. Paolo Puccinelli. Today's guest on that triathlon show is uh, Paolo Puccinelli from Brazil. Paolo, welcome. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, Michael. Thanks. And you? A good, thank you. Uh, why don't you start by just giving an introduction of yourself to the listeners? Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, but first, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Michael, for invitation. Uh, I listen to your podcast weekly, and I really like it. So for me, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Paulo Puccinelli. I'm a Brazilian sports physician, and I'm PhD in exercise physiology. Uh, I work in a football team, Atlético Paranaense, as a team physician, and I compose a medical team of Brazilian Aquatic Sports Confederation, and also uh, I'm an amateur triathlete as well. <laughs> what is your favorite uh, distance in triathlon? Uh, I prefer the short distance. Uh, yep. actually because um, I came from swimming so uh, I was to to swim when I was a child so I'm a good swimmer and uh, the good swimmers has advantage in a short short distance so I really like and I like the 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 taste of lactate <laughs> that yeah. we yeah yeah I like the go to hell or like every in a high, uh, a high speed. That's something that, as a swimmer, you've been accustomed to as well from all your training in the pool, uh, getting used to like that high lactate and high intensity. So, so I'm sure yes. that plays a part. Well, so the reason uh, that we scheduled this interview is uh, a study that that you published uh, 
at the end of 2020, uh, which is called Predictors of Performance in Amateur Olympic Distance Triathlon. Uh, so, uh, and so this is, can you start by just uh, discussing what was the objective, the goal of this research? Yes. Uh, yes. I, actually, I like to, to start uh, telling the history about this research. Uh, the research was born when I asked Professor Marilha, who became my doctor advisor professor after this question, uh, and I asked her about which variables are important for amateur triathletes' performance. And she answered me that she didn't have share specifically in amateur performance, and she told that we should study it. Uh, so now uh, we have grounded in sports science that performance in aerobic sports uh, is influenced by uh, the maximal aerobic capacity, which is represented by VO2 max, uh, the ability to sustain it, to sustain a high aerobic capacity, which, are, which is represented by percentage of VO2 max and the running economy or the movement economy. Uh, these variables uh, are really uh, embedded for professional performance, aerobic sports. And we look at the literature and we found just a few articles discussing specifically in amateur triathlon performance. Uh, we don't have many articles talking about triathlon performance at all. And most of them discuss the professional performance, in, specifically in, in Ironman. So we decided to study the variables that could influence the Olympic distance amateur triathlon performance. All right. Yeah, that's perfect. And, and just one, one thing that I want to add to that when you say uh, the, the ability to sustain a high percentage of VO2 max, uh, that we quite often is represented by the lactate threshold or the second lactate threshold it's uh, one variable that for the listeners may might maybe make make a bit more sense for those that are not really deep into exercise physiology that basically where is your threshold that is always a percentage of your vo2 max if you have a good threshold at closer to your vo2 max then that is an indication that you can go at a relatively high intensity for a longer time that than somebody who has a lower threshold relative to their vo2 max exactly exactly uh, the the main of uh training is uh go uh take your vo2 max uh better but also to uh approximate your thresholds uh more closer to vo2 max and it represent uh, the the capacity to to sustain the the more percentage of your two max in a, in a race, yeah, exactly. And then when and then when you add the economy to that, if you are more economical, then you can uh, you're producing a certain amount of energy at your threshold, for example. But if you're more economical, then that energy is transferred into more or trans, translates into more speed than somebody who is less economical. So. So that's how the variables relate. So we have that those definitions uh, basically covered. So so what? How did you do the study? What were the? How many participants did you have, and what was the methods of it? Oh, cool. uh, first we uh, decide to to study uh, one specifically race. So we took um, a national trophy here in Brazil. Uh, which call it a uh, Brazilian trophy uh, in Santos, Sao Paulo. And we invited uh, all the, the participants to, to go to went to our laboratory. Uh, and we had uh, 45 uh, volunteers, uh, 39 male and six female. And we did uh, some... Uh, uh, some questions and some questionnaires, and we did uh, two different tests. Uh, first one was um, VO2 max protocol. Uh, so we did in a treadmill, 
And the second one, we did a run economy uh, in a treadmill as well. And we had a lot of variables uh, that we compare with the results of the race. So that's what we did for association, so to associate the, the variables that, the, that influence the amateur triathlon performance. Yeah, and uh, so and you also had some uh, so the questionnaires the the things that you included in them included things like your chronotype uh, so whether you're more of a morning person or evening person or somewhere in the middle uh, what, were there any other things there on those questionnaire side of things that were not physiological variables that you investigated? Yes, uh, we question uh, we had questions about. Uh, triathlon experience that mm. was very interesting results and we uh, also asked about uh, routine the volume of training uh, hours that they spend in swimming and running and cycling uh, we asked about the uh, disease chronic disease that we they could had and uh, about uh, sleep, uh, how many hours uh, they usually sleep, and uh, if they had, if they felt uh, tired when they wake up, and the chronotype as well, if they are prefer to to train in the morning or the evening, and we had all of these variables with the race, and in the day of the race we also had uh, gene samples. So we took the, the polymorphism of four different genes to try to correlate with performance. Yeah, and these genes are genes that in various previous research have been shown to sometimes uh, correlate with uh, or be, be involved in endurance performance. And, and one thing that I don't think we mentioned is that you also, this is standard, of course, when you do a VO2 max test, you measured their body weight and height, and but also you measured fat mass and lean mass, and you did a DEXA scan. So it was very accurate, and a very accurate way of of getting at body composition and those. So those body composition metrics were also uh, variables that you correlated with the performance in the race. Yes, so, exactly. What we did. Well, sorry, uh, what we did was uh, have a lot of information uh, which are already related with performance. And as I told, uh, we know about the professional uh, performance and we are trying to, to find if it's, if it's are similar or different between amateur and, and professional triathletes. Yeah, yeah. And and the participants, so you said that you asked all uh, the athletes that were registered for the race, and in the end, after excluding uh, some athletes, you had 45 uh, participants in the study, and uh, those included 39 males and six females, with a VO2 max of them. I'm trying to look at it, find it here. So it was 50, six, basically 60 for the males and 50 for the females was the the VO2 max to give listeners an idea of their fitness level. Yes, yes, they they are they are good. Like they, uh, we had uh, actually we had the the, the similar sample of uh, the main uh, participants of the the, the race. Uh, they they performed in the middle. Yeah, as we yeah. can we can I can tell you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if we discuss the results, then so so first you you had this correlation analysis that you did with uh, the total race time and race performance and and also performance in the individual disciplines. So, so what interesting correlations did you find between these variables and triathlon performance? Yes, good. Uh, the the first one that I can highlight is. Uh, that there is no difference between male and female performance, uh, significant difference, and it's very interesting. Uh, maybe in amateur, we are getting closer, the, the performance between male and female, and maybe it's 
one of our uh, studies that we are getting now that we are trying to 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 discuss it and the other one was the maximal aerobic capacity velocity uh, the maximal aerobic velocity that it's more important important than the vo2 max and this one is very can, interesting can you explain the uh, for I, I don't. I don't think that all listeners know what the MAV, the maximal aerobic velocity, is. So, can you just quickly explain what that is and how it's different from VO two max? Yes, yes. Uh, just to 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 understand, it's like in a protocol that the VO two max protocol we starts uh, with uh, low velocity, and every minute we getting uh, more speed, one kilometer per hour per minute. Uh, until the, the 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 exhaustion and the the velocity that uh, the test uh, finish, we have this velocity and this velocity is high correlated with uh, performance and it's very interesting that it's more uh, important than the VO2 max and it's very nice because uh, we have an uh, a good uh, variable that we can do it uh, outside. We do not need to to go to laboratory to have this this variable, and it's very interesting to coaches to to athletes and for us as well. Yeah, so uh, this is something oh, that uh, the previous guest on the podcast. Uh, so sorry, I'm just going to say this is something that the previous guest on the podcast, Michael Rosenblatt, also discussed that uh, maximum aerobic velocity or maximum aer aerobic power is uh, a very good sort of predictor of uh, of performance uh, based on some research that he had he had done and and as you say uh, anybody can just go to a track and uh, and in and it can be very easy to to increase your speed in a controlled manner every minute and until exhaustion and see what your maximum aer aerobic velocity is when you when you cannot go any faster, you don't know what your VO2 max is, but but you can find your maximum aerobic velocity, which anyway, based on your research now, seems to be a better better correlated to performance than VO2 max. Yes, yes. And uh, other variable that I can tell you is uh, triathlon experience. This one is very interesting. Uh, it's more important than uh, training volume. Uh, so we, our, our group, we just uh, published our other uh, article talking about uh, a triathlon experience and training volume in Ironman performance. And uh, the triathlon experience has uh, more, uh, is more correlated with performance than the triathlon volume. And it's very interesting to talk about it. Like, uh, maybe we have to wait the, the time or you have to train every day and wait uh, the, the process to, to do the, the work. It's better than try to, to, to train a lot and everything that we uh, sometimes we, we think the, the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Consistency over years is is yes. really important of course we with yes. triathlon experience there basically the question is how many years have the list have the participant been doing triathlon so so we don't know exactly how much they've been training during those years but 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 it's probably likely that if somebody has been doing it for five years that well they probably enjoy triathlon which means that they have probably been doing it fairly consistently but if you have somebody who is who has just been doing it for one year, then maybe it's somebody who, well, it's new and interesting, but it's not a guarantee that they that they necessarily have been uh, that they're going to be as consistent yes. as the one who has been doing it for a longer time. Yes, exactly. And uh, the other variable that is interesting is the the body composition. Uh, we. Uh, the body composition is very uh, correlated with uh, the performance, uh, specifically the the lean mass, the uh, and the fat mass percentage, like the relative ones, 
so it's better to 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 be uh, or to have less uh, lean mass and less uh, fat mass percentage, and it's really correlated with performance. And yeah. the, the, the last Which one... Is no, uh, the, no surprise, oh, sorry, sorry. really. Yes, yes, no, of sorry, course. Go on. And yes, <laughs> and the last one that actually all of I talk is, uh, is similar than professional and amateur triathlon performance, but uh, one of we can discuss it's different is running economy. Uh, we didn't uh, find the correlation with running economy and triathlon performance in amateur triathletes. And it's different uh, that we can find in the literature. Uh, and we discuss it like maybe uh, in amateur, the VO2 max and the maximum aerobic velocity is different between the, the participants. So maybe uh, the running economy is not so important in amateur triathlon performance than we already know about it in professionals. It's very yeah. interesting. Like and, and that, maybe, that is, maybe that is, sorry. That, that is very interesting. And, and uh, I'm looking here at the table with the correlation coefficients and, uh, and just to clarify, there is a correlation between running economy and running performance in the, in the run split, but not with the overall performance, but the, even the correlation with the, with the run split is weak to moderate when you compare yes. to, for example, the maximum aerobic velocity, that correlation with the run split is, uh, is strong, moderate is strong. So, so it's not, yeah, running economy clearly seems to be of less importance than VO2 max as well as maximum aerobic velocity and also lean mass uh, and, uh, and so on. So, so that's, that is very interesting. Yes. Exactly. And and then what you also did was you did regression analyses with the different with the swim, with bike and run splits and with the overall uh, time. And, and just to explain for listeners, uh, th this basically means that uh, that a regression analysis is when you try to find which are the variables that can best explain uh, the the swim performance and the bike performance and the run performance and then the overall performance. And ca can you basically put together an equation where with just a few variables, you can predict fairly accurately what, what the performance will be. So, so which, yeah, what did you find in the regression analysis? Uh, it's, well, a good point to, to do this kind of uh, analysis that you can uh, have an idea how strong the variables are or which one of them are more important to preview the, 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 the performance. And uh, we saw that the, the MEV, the maximum aerobic velocity, is important for swim, for cycling, and for running. And the uh, the, the total time and we saw that triathlon experience also is important of in all of them and uh, the body composition uh, as well so it's important to 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 find that these these variables are uh, very important for performance race uh, for triathlon and performance race you know, for all of them yeah yeah uh so basically um i'm just looking at the the formulas there and uh, running was interesting because in running the only variable that was included was the uh, mav the maximum aerobic velocity but in in all of the other ones you had both mav and the triathlon experience and also in overall and cycling you had le uh, lean muscle or percentage lean lean mass so, uh, but very, very similar uh, or in, in those three different or in the three disciplines and in the overall time. Um, yeah. So, so then you also did 
uh, an analysis when you split the participants into a fast group and a slow group, basically around the average or the, or the median of the times, and uh, to try to find out what the difference is between the the fastest. And this was for the male athletes only because he didn't have enough females, but uh, but basically to find what the differences were between the faster and the slower athletes. So what did you find in that analysis? Uh, we find that the fasters, the fastest one, are more uh, had uh, virtual max uh, MAV and uh, have a percentage of virtual max sustained uh, higher than the slower group. Uh, we find they are had uh, less uh, weight and uh, they are more. Uh, experiencing uh, had more experience in triathlon, and uh, they did uh, all uh, all three the modalities and the race the total race uh, faster than the slower group. That's the the main uh, findings. Mm. So it it basically confirms what what you already found in the correlation analysis and the regression analysis with what the the main the important variables there are. Um, I, actually, you, so you said that the sustained uh, the ability to sustain a percentage of VO2 max so the threshold was different. But I'm looking at the table and uh, I'm trying to see. I think it looks that there wasn't a significantly. Uh, the velocity at at threshold was different, actually. Between yes, yeah, okay, yes, yes, not not the percentage, yes, yeah. the, just the the velocity, yeah. And uh, but and here this is another uh, interesting point that running economy was also uh, the same or not different between between the two groups. So another basically uh, another uh, another indication that maybe for amateurs running economy isn't as important as it has been shown in in some of those studies for professional athletes yes for sure uh, we have to to look for it like we have to 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 train the, your running economy actually running economy is a uh, multifactorial uh, variable like uh, which include uh Train volume uh, include uh, experience in esports and others other variables, but uh, maybe uh, we have uh, to train or to look for other variables is, that are more important than just the running economy specifically. Yeah, and uh, then one one other thing that you did. So we talked a little bit how you did the questionnaire around chronotype and and that i found was really interesting so so how did did you find any trends there with the chronotype yes it's, it's very good point uh we find that most of triathletes are morning profile like they prefer to do important uh things in the morning the 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 start uh, hours in the morning, like because uh, we we had um, a good uh, questionnaire which uh, asked about, uh, for example, if you have uh, an important interview or an important uh, uh, thing to do, what time do you prefer? And a lot of them uh, uh, answer in the the beginning of the morning, so. We find that uh, different uh, situation or different profile than the the, the population. More uh, the population in general are more the evening profile than the triathletes that we studied. And we have uh, a issue here, like maybe the triathlon uh, selected this kind of people, or uh, like. This kind of people prefer triathlon. Like yeah. it's a very interesting point. Yeah. And what what I I think and what we we concluded that uh, maybe most of the people choose triathlon because it, but they can uh, move uh, can change the the profile. Like if you are evening and start to to do triathlon, amateur triathlon specifically because. We know that amateur have a lot of other 
things to do in the, the whole of day, like to work, to, to, to family and other stuff. So maybe uh, it's kind of uh, triathlon choose these kind of people. Yeah, no, that, that would make sense. And, uh, and also another clarification around the questionnaire. Uh, this is uh, a questionnaire that has, has been basically developed and validated for, it's not something that you came up with. It was, uh, it's a questionnaire that exists to evaluate chronotype called Horn Estimate, I think, uh, is what it's called. Yes, yes. It's, yeah. it's more than a 50 years questionnaire. Like, yeah. and very interesting. Uh, you can uh, access it on internet and you can do it. And it's very interesting to, to choose the best hours in the day to, to do important things. Yeah. Uh, the next questions that I had on my list here were around just discussing a little bit around MAV and running economy and travel experience. But I think we actually already covered that pretty well when we discussed those parts. So, uh, so let's move on to then, are there any practical tips or advice that you think that listeners can learn from the findings uh, of this study? Oh, good. Uh, one, the first advice that I can give you, uh, first of then is, uh, Respect the process. Uh, don't try to train a lot, but because you're gonna get hurt or have some problems, just uh, wait the process and wait the triathlon experience. It's very important, and you have to respect it. Uh, the first, uh, the second one uh, is uh, it's, be- it's good to to uh, go to some tests to, to do some tests and uh, to find where you are and uh, train and uh, do the, the test again to go through when you get married and other stuff. And the, the last one is uh, the body composition is important, but uh, not so important or it's not the, the, the most important thing. So uh it's getting it's good to getting a in a good shape but uh not uh run so eat so much that's it i think that if you follow the first advice there of respecting the process and uh, being consistent over time then body composition follows and it will basically on its own it will get to where it should be for you as an individual of course you need to like not eat a lot of junk food and stuff like that but but the more important thing there is to yeah not not focus really on it as a big thing but but that's it will follow if you if you train consistently and for over a long time like there are no quick fixes there and that as well as the other physiological variables will probably follow and be correlated with just your the the time that you have spent the the experience that you have in triathlon so so over the years, probably it will get better and better. If you're somebody who is new to triathlon and the second year of triathlon, it will be better than the first year of triathlon. It's, there's no point trying to take a shortcut and trying to get all the way to the finish line in the first few months. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. And, and since you're a triathlete yourself and also you do uh, testing on triathletes, physiological testing and things like that, um, Completely unrelated to this study, it can be anything. Do you have any other sort of pieces of advice that that you think are would be interesting for the listeners to learn from from you? Not not related to this study particularly. Yes, uh, uh, actually, uh, I'm a sports uh, physician, so uh, I attend uh, athletes in my clinic, and there is some uh, uh, not good shortcuts and one of them is that we are gonna we talk it's uh, training a lot but uh, other one that I always advise my patients it's uh, respect uh, the sleep and try to have a good uh, and long time in sleeping like uh, around seven uh, hours per day uh, because uh, we always think that training is more important uh, 
variable, and but we're not getting better in training. Actually, we get better sleeping and recovering, and it's a good uh, advice that I I I give to them. Other one uh, is not uh, you. You have to eat to train. It's very nice, like because I, I listen a lot your your podcast, and always there is someone telling that it's very important to to eat a lot and good stuffs. So uh, it's other uh, tip that I I can give your listeners. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, finally, let's finish off with the rapid fire questions. So take just one sentence to answer these. And the first one is, what's your favorite book, blog, or resource related to triathlon and endurance sports? <laughs> it's PubMed. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> PubMed is my, <laughs> my favorite site. <laughs> and who's somebody that has inspired you? Oh, um Ching Don, <laughs> Ching Don really inspired me. Yeah. And finally, what's a personal habit that's helped you achieve success? Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't understand. Sorry. Uh, a personal habit that has helped you achieve success. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, wake up early in the morning and uh, start uh, start my day training. Brilliant. All right. Uh, do you have any social media or website or for Brazilian listeners? We do have a number of listeners in Brazil uh, that might be interested in testing and things like that. How can people find you or get in touch, get in touch with you? Oh, uh, I think maybe the easier way is on Instagram. Uh, my profile is Paulo Point uh, yep. and that's it. Yeah, we can talk yeah, in, right. on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll put that in the show notes so listeners can find it. Yes. Right. Thank Thank you so much, Paolo, for uh, taking the time to to share your research findings with us. It's uh, very interesting and uh, glad uh, glad that you did this research because, as you said, uh, there there hasn't been a lot of studies in amateurs uh, before before the one you did. So. So it was a very, very good one. And uh, with quite a number of athletes, with 40, 45 athletes, that's that's a good good sample size. So very impressive. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Michael, for inviting invite me. And I hope to listen to you uh, <laughs> weekly as I usually do. So thank you very much. And congratulations for your podcast. It's very nice. Thank you. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed that uh, interview with Dr. Puccinelli. As always, you can find the show notes on scientifictriathlon.com and we'll have all the links there that are relevant. So to uh, Paulo's ResearchGate, Twitter and Instagram, as well as to the study that, as I mentioned, is uh, open access in full on ResearchGate. So you can go and have a read. On Thursday, we have another TTS Thursday episode coming out. And then next Monday, I'm interviewing Leslie Patterson again. But also now we have Simon Marshall, her husband and sports psychologist with us. And we will discuss the inner workings of our brain and how that impacts things we do and feel around triathlon, but also just in life in general. You could call it applied neuroscience and applied sports psychology and whatever you want to call it it's an incredibly fascinating interview so make sure you do not miss that one because it was a blast doing it uh, if you are looking for training plans or coaching services go and check out scientifictriathlon.com by the time you hear this interview we might actually have launched the advanced olympic 70.3 and full distance training plans or they might be just days away. You might have heard about this on the first day episode last week, but uh, I am recording this particular segment in advance. So uh, so it might be that, uh, that, well, that's why you don't hear it in this episode, even though they may be already out or they may be just a few days away. But stay tuned for that. I'm almost, almost definitely uh, sure that on Thursday we should be able to tell you something more about that. They are that close. Big thanks to our sponsors, Precision Hydration, that you can find on precisionhydration.com. Go and take their free online sweat test and get a personalized hydration plan for your next race. 
and get 15% off your order of Electrolyte products with the promo code that triathlon show 15 And thank you to Roka that you can find on roka.com. Check out their wetsuits, tri suits, swim skins, goggles, high performance eyewear, and prescription glasses and sunglasses, and get 20% off your order with the promo code that you can get on roka.com forward slash TTS. Thank you, as always, for listening. Keep training smart and keep loving triathlons.